Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve. Happy Hogmanay. Yes. And I will say on that note, we have a delightful interview today with Jeanette Budge from yes. Shetland, where she yes. explains a lot of the Shetland traditions around New Year's. And that was really fun. That was really fun yeah. to hear about all that and, and hear why that, you know, these things are done. And yeah. so th- that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, so that, and it's yeah. pattern day for you. And it is pattern day. It's the last day of the Shetland Hogman A box. So we're getting a pattern from a design by Jeanette Budge, which is why we have the interview with her. Right. Using all the beautiful uh, silly sheep yarn that we have collected over the last few days. So, And yay. obviously you are in a hotel because we have to pre-record because you have a travel day. So that's, you are not spending the New Year's Eve in New York City. That's been determined, but we're pre-recording. No, I talked about, I don't know if that made it into the end as we were saying our crazy goodbyes yesterday while we were there in Times Square, which was very crowded and very busy. And I would have have hated it. Yeah, but I did do New Year's Eve Times Square one time when I was in college. It was 1997, I want to say, going to 98. No, it would have been 96 going to 97. And uh, yeah, would ne- I will never do that again. I will never yeah. do that. <laughs> so, but you have a travel day and we both have some things going on this weekend. So we're pre-recording. Yeah. And you're so coordinated there. <laughs> I mean, let's just state the obvious. It's not like you planned that, but it looks yeah, nice. Like this. No, I mean, obviously the chair matches the wallpaper because it's a hotel. So they plan for those things. But my outfit today, I'm like, huh. This works okay. I know, when you logged in, I'm like, "Wow, that's that's coordinated. <laughs> you look great." And you know, let's acknowledge your lovely haircut. Yes. Since we and had, you you're know, looking very good too. I just want to throw that out there. I know you had a crazy morning, and here you are yeah, all put together. You. And yeah, my hair. I'm well. It's supposed to snow snow next week, so we'll see if I make it. Oh no. <laughs> Or if the universe is just telling me, no, you don't need Yeah, the weather gods really do not want you to have purple hair. Or a cut, apparently. Or a cut, even. (laughs) So we'll see. We'll see if I make it there next week or not. (laughs) Otherwise, go before the storm and get a hotel room so you're just right there in town. (laughs) And then just walk over. Who would do my, yeah, who would do my morning chores? That's true. I mean, my kids are here. Your kids are home. That's true. Yeah, that would be one expensive haircut, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. (laughs) Yeah. So, a couple things. Yes. Besides the obvious New Year's Eve things. You'll notice my lights and stuff are gone. (sighs) Well, we do that. We took, you know, when Christmas is done, Christmas is done. Now, I know, like, from a religious aspect, the Christmas isn't, like, goes all the way through epiphany or whatever right. and from, yeah the, the 12 christian, days start on christmas so in the christian tradition christmas. um but since we're pretty much heathens um <laughs> the reason that we take it all down is because well first we celebrate new year's because it's a big kind of anyway and then uh-huh. we, then we launch into birthday season in my family yeah like right away like right right away <laughs> yeah yeah because my daughter's birthday is on the second Oh, nice. And then my husband's birthday is also in January. And so, and my sister, my other sister. So we just like, okay, clean slate. Now we decorate for birthdays. Right. Launching into the next thing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So do you leave up your Christmas stuff till the 6th? Um, see, I don't have like a firm cutoff day. I do leave it up past New Year's. And then it's basically like, when I have time after New Year, then they come down. So sometimes it's like a day or two after. Sometimes like we're looking to mid-January sometimes before okay. I finally get around to it. Because like I said, I think I've mentioned before, we have three trees um, because we have so many ornaments um, that the number of trees we have has grown. It sounds and like then- you need to do a Christmas restash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, well, it's every year as I'm packing things up. So as I, as I unpack things, 
there's usually is about half a bin that doesn't get put out. Okay. And then if by the time I'm packing things up again, so then I've had like that whole time to think about if I really do want those things or not. And some of them do stick around because right. they're like family things. Yeah. And some of it's just like, no, this can go. So usually, yeah, about, about, you know, a quarter to a third of a bin worth of stuff will go to Goodwill every year. But I haven't, I didn't really buy much by way of Christmas decorations this year. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm getting to a good place for our home. Right. You know, because we also moved, when we moved from the Philippines, it was a bigger house. It's sure. a much bigger house. And so we had like bigger objects and more objects. And anyway, now we're sort of like have the decorations yeah. for this home. That but the compelling out. question, will yes. you keep, will you keep the pizza ornament? Of course. <laughs> I mean, that Just, now has a whole story with it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good memory, a good memory <laughs> item. Yeah. Hey. And, you know, if the blue and gold uh, beads come off, I feel like that would be easy enough to rectify. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) Not a problem. Do uh, you're you're doing the yarn stash restash, and I feel like that's a nice, it's a good thing to do, you know, over because you're starting out. I mean, it's almost a New Year's resolution kind of thing that you're already enacting right now. Right. Yeah. Well, just sort of that idea of starting the new the year fresh, you know. Yeah. So, are you? Do you have? Are you a resolution person? In the past, I have been. Or at least I've had like goals for, at least for my crafting. But this year I'm really like, no, you know what, whatever happens, happens. I have projects I want to knit. I have a couple patterns I've designed that I need to just sit down and write. Um, That's hard. But really it's like, I would like to have those things happen, but I'm not putting any goal structures around them okay so you don't have like firm timelines and no i'm just sort of like that's my list i have a list of things i'd like to see happen in the near future yeah Yeah. but nothing really time bound or like you know planned out or anything how about you are you a resolutioner kind of depends on the year um yeah I've never done one that actually lasted more than a couple of months. <laughs> so I would say they're more like goals than resolutions, necess- you know, uh-huh. and I don't know, is there really a difference? But I think, um, are we talking about personally or crafty? I mean, crafty. I don't want to get too personal. We can, we can finish the recording and talk about personal ones after if you want. <laughs> okay. I have a personal one that I'll share though, just because okay. it's a YouTube channel that I found that I really like. So uh-huh. one thing is, I mean, the more that we sit and knit and we're sedentary, you know, you cut, I mean, I'm of a certain age, you start noticing I'm a little stiff, you know, when I get up. Uh-huh. Right. So I follow um, yoga with Adrian. It's a free. Yeah, she's great. She is, and it's not yeah. like I'm really gonna be all pretzely, but right. but the stretching helps. I'm just saying when I do that, when I do that more regularly, at least a couple of times a week, I notice that I'm less stiff, and my back hurts less, and my knees right. hurt less, and you know what I mean. I sound like an old person, yeah. but but I do like yoga with Adrian, and I like Benji, her dog. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And if you get on her newsletter, she doesn't, I mean, it's not a lot of spam or anything, but she sends out like a monthly calendar that you can print that has like which video and how many minutes it is. Per, and okay. I appreciate, I appreciate that. So, yeah. Yeah. I just want to yeah, be, we more- have, um, we have a Peloton. We got a Peloton last, is it just last year we got it or was it the year before? Anyway, it was during the pandemic at some point. For one of the Christmases, yeah, we got a Peloton, and it's not just biking. It they have like weightlifting and yoga and all kinds of different types. Is it of like a treadmill TV? I don't even get what it is. Yeah, so it's so it's a it's a treadmill with a big screen on it, and it will. So the biking ones are like there's ones where you're just biking through a landscape, 
there's ones and then there's like ones where there's someone biking with you and they're like okay so for the next three minutes we're gonna go up to well they're talking you know, to you. 80 strokes a minute or 80 things a minute or whatever you know and and one of the guys is really like he's a professional cyclist and so he has you do like technique parts like unclip one foot and just pedal with one kind of thing okay. so there's all kinds of different instructors Same. with different styles but then they have you can turn you can take the screen and rotate it all the way around so that then you can be like right. on the other side of it and do workouts and things so there's oh, weightlifting okay. and there's yoga and there's cardio and okay. all kinds of things so that's okay. that's when i stopped doing adrian because it they're like there's yoga videos right on that so i get it if anyone's on peloton and wants to be my friend i thought i knew how there no i just thought i knew how okay but you get All different right. benefits. Like if you work out, if you do a workout that your friend are also did, then you get like a different achievement. So oh, so you have badges and stuff. You get a gold star. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of like those kind of motivation <laughs> things. Like they'll come out with like the June challenge, the July challenge, whatever. Yeah. And when you yeah. hit it, you get different. Yeah. So yeah. Very like well, gold star focused. As <laughs> far as crafty goals. I have several things I want to, that I want to practice and, uh -huh. and investigate, um, like different types of cast ons, for example, yeah. there's a bajillion that I'm not familiar with. Really. There's uh -huh. like, there's cast different types of bind offs, cast offs. Um, right. I want to knit at least, well, I say that. It would be nice to knit a pair of socks a month, but it also depends on what other projects I'm doing at the time and what video tutorials and net alongs we're doing on the channel and how busy I get and yada, yada, blah, blah, you know? Yeah. Right. So I have things I want to make for myself and hopefully they correlate with what other people want to make so I can do it on the channel. <laughs> yeah. Like a finger, yeah. like a fingering weight cardigan. Nice. Yeah. That's a lot of work. I did a, uh, I did sign up the other day for, um, a breed study oh. yarn subscription. So that's being run by Longway Homestead and they're a Canadian wool grower. And, but they have, so they're like coordinating it, uh -huh. but it's different wool growers around Canada with, uh, that have produced breed specific yarns. Right. So once a month, they send you a hundred gram hank of a breed specific yarn for oh, you to experiment cool. with, play with, and like learn about the different yeah. breeds. And I was sort of like, I saw them talking about it. And I was like, oh, that's going to be like, that's a lot of yarn. That's going to be super expensive. And then when I went and I did the price conversion to US dollars, right. it ended up with the shipping included, it ended up being $25 a month. I was like, that is amazingly That's pretty uh, reasonable. reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. So I signed up for that. And my hope with that is I'm hoping to like do that every month, like actually experience that yarn right. every month and get like a good idea of what that breeds yarn is like. Yeah. So, so that, I think that's the only like goal type thing I have is just yeah. to not let those pile up, but actually get use them. Yes. So yeah. since we're talking about clubs, I'm going to make a shameless plug here. Okay. Because we're, we're, because we're in charge. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Cause so this is a great one. My, um, you know, I was doing the monthly subscription from Lauren at a girl on her wall and she's yeah. closed. She's closed now and I wish her well and she's amazing. But now I've signed up for the monthly club from Heather at so happy Jane. And yeah. so if people want to have a discount code, I'll drop that down below um, because she and I have an affiliate agreement now where people can get a bit of a discount and then I get a small commission and it doesn't cost the, it doesn't cost you right. anything to order, but I get a little commission because obviously I'm bringing her customers. So yeah. I did an unboxing video. Um, you can look back on my Instagram for that. And she puts so much care. It's like, you feel like you have a little, it's a little present yeah because you get the skein you can order one or two you can order super wash or non-super wash fingering right. um Which you can amazing. get you can get dk 
also. So you choose your options. And so I really like that. And you can switch back and forth whenever you want. You don't have to call or email. You can just go in and like manage your own subscription with your account. Oh, awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Um, anyway, so signups are open now until I think the 5th. So but they she, sign up, you can do it every month, right? You can sign up every month. Well, it's, it's an like, ongoing automatically renewing right. subscription, but she only opens for new signups, like for just this few days. Right. Like usually five or six days. So hooray. So the code is Pearl together, all caps. You get $5 off if you use the code and then I get a little kickback. So win-win. So Yay. yeah. So yeah, that's- And her, her boxes are- like you said, it's great. They're jam packed with cool things. But it's and, really thoughtful, and she puts together yeah. this little theme, and you're like, "Oh, that's really pretty." And even the tissue paper matches, and you're like, "Oh," because <laughs> like I'm not good at that kind of thing, so I really appreciate it. It makes me feel special when. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you might get a little little chocolate or stitch markers or who knows. But of course, no. you get the yarn you ordered, and I got the perfectly paired one. So you have so two skeins that coordinate and go together. And I'm like, oh, uh-huh. so yeah. I don't know. And then it's fun because not only do you have this box that's specially, it's all cute and presented beautifully, but she has a monthly Zoom call and a Ravelry group. And then there's QR codes on the back of the little letter that she sends that's for various things. So right. it's really well thought out. Yeah. So I'm, I'm super happy. I'll be sharing all about that because obviously it's, you know, an affiliate relationship, but I think it's amazing. She's done it. Well, yeah. I mean, we did the interview with her and we were both just gaga over the package that was, I think it was the December one she showed us. And we were just like, this is amazing. This is such yeah. a brilliant idea. And then she was like, well, I am doing an affiliate program. And so it wasn't even like, right. you know, you heard about the affiliate program. Like yeah. we were in love right. with it before we. Heard oh yeah. About right. Right. And, you know, just like with you, with your podcast, I mean, I share things that I like, whether just because I like them, whether it benefits me or not. Right. But I like it. So people should know because it's amazing. Yeah, it's great. Yes. Hooray. So I'm excited for 2023. It's a big deal. It's a big year of change for us just because of, you know, the youngest is going to graduate and go to college in that season of your life, you know, where... Yeah. They're, they're fledglings. <laughs> yes, they're flying, fleeing the nest. Yeah, my youngest will be here in New York, ah, you know, and watching my oldest make more progress. Yeah, this yeah, is going to be it's good. It's good. Yeah. I might actually do more traveling. I'll believe it when I see it. Okay. Jana. <laughs> okay you might see some podcasts coming from various places we'll see okay i might start with things i can drive to there you go baby steps baby you gotta get off the farm <laughs> i'm so like such a hick <laughs> that's all right okay last one scissors and thread and needle thanks is it going to be a little notions kit? Oh, it's a notions bag. Yes. And it has oh, a little so spot cute. you could hook a thing on. Nice. It's cute. That's a fun print. Oh, I love the Cardinals. Yeah, it's from Woodsy and Wild. Nice. And I'll put a link to them down below. So, yeah, you were just talking about on your stash. Oh, here we go. Here's that a notion- card. Woodsyandwild.com, artisan crafted, nature inspired bags and home goods sewn in Seabrook Island, South Carolina. Nice. That wraps it up for my That's packages good. this time. B to C to 2023. Yep. Here we are getting ready to go into 2023. Yeah. So you mentioned briefly the uh, yarn stash restash. So we didn't talk about it yesterday because we were in a horde of people. But yesterday was to organize your circular needles and make sure like any broken ones get thrown out, any with cruddy joins, like, do you really want to use the one that has an awful join and you're like having to fight all the time? Yeah, no, that just pisses me off. I mean, I will ditch those. As soon as that happens, I'm like, hmm, I might try another round or two just to make sure that it's not just, you know, 
dirty yeah. or did I get chocolate on it? <laughs> <laughs> it happens. So just organizing those and getting those done, making note of any that you like, oh, I need a 3.25, but this right. last one had key tips to them and I had to throw them out. So let's get a new pair, write that on your list. And then today we're doing the same thing with DPNs. We're going through making sure we have complete sets of the same material because yeah. different materials will work differently on different yarn. Yarn. Yes. Now I will say one idea, like if you do have an incomplete set, don't necessarily throw it out, throw right. them all the ones out because you can use those as cable needles. You oh, don't need yeah. to have... You don't need to have the little bend for something to be a cable needle. You can just use like an odd DPN yeah. as a cable needle. So oh, yeah, I don't have, throw out DPNs. You can use them as shawl pins too. You could use them as shawl pins. You yeah. could cook barbecue chicken on them. Just saying. Okay, no. <laughs> no. Because I don't think I want the <laughs> lamination glue in my food. <laughs> I mean, if they're metal, then they're reusable. <laughs> Aluminum is bad for you. <laughs> but I'm kidding people. I know. So, yeah, you might, but, yeah, but if you have long hair, you can do the stick thing. Yeah, but if you don't have another way to use them, like go ahead and get rid of them. Or if you have like, maybe like I know my mother was a prolific sock knitter. And so she had like a million size two needles. Uh -huh. And it was like, you really need to A, stop buying these. And B, there's no reason for you to have like 40 size two needles. Like let's make a few sets and pass them on to other people right. who can use them or something, right. you know, like, so think over your options, donate, throw out, you know, like it's all there in the post for today. So that's, that's there on, I thought I knew how. I mean, it's a stick. You can use it for lots of things. I would stick it in the ground with a seed packet on it in the garden. I was just going to say, yeah. When you started saying it's a stick, I was like, seed packet. Yeah. But here's today's. Okay. It's chunky. Chunky one, but it's not yarn. It's hard and chunky. A31. Okay. We have delicious treat for today called Puff and Poo. What is that? So they're little, um, it's chocolate and sugar and toasted crispies and coconut marshmallow. They're just little like drop cookie kind of things. They call it puff and poo. It's made uh, by Island Larder there in Shetland. So this is, this is one of those things where like if a Shetlander is coming to visit you and they want to bring a little present. Right. This is often one of the things that they'll think of to bring to share. So a little mm -hmm. gift to you from Shetland, a little tasty treat. And then we have, um, <laughs> I'm just thinking, you know, I mean, I have chickens, so I'm just thinking, great. I'm going to go visit someone and bring them bird. Bloop. Bring, them, bring them chicken poo. So we have a little card here that I will read in a moment. But That's first, I want to show the cushion. So this is the first fit cushion oh. by Jeanette Budge. That's lovely. Who our interview is with. So this is the complete one. And then this is sort of the picture of the pattern. So you can see you have like a dark daisy here, but then the colored daisy is in the yeah, middle. The inversion. The uh -huh. Yeah. So that's quite nice. So she's designed that for us. And that, so first fit is... First footing, which we talked about earlier in the month, where the first person you want to come to your house is a dark haired man <laughs> bearing gifts. So, oh, I mean, puff and poo. Or puff and poo. So, happy Hogmanay. Please enjoy your New Year celebrations, maybe with the added twist of some of the Shetlandic and, and Scottish traditions you learned about in the Shetland Hogmanay box. Tomorrow, you may wish to engage in one final Hogmanay tradition from Shetland. Spend the first day of the new year doing a little bit of everything you hope to do in 2023. So visit with family and friends, spend some time outside, read, plan a trip, and definitely pull out your knitting. How you spend your first day of the year is how you will spend the year itself. So be productive and have some fun. And then we have information for the Silly Sheep 
and Jeanette Budge and Eileen Lard are all there for you nice. to find more. So, and that was a lovely yeah. interview with her. She talks about the first footing and her family's experience doing that. And that was delightful to yeah. listen to. Yeah, because yeah. she has a tall, dark haired relative. So that's the day he gets to shine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Fun. Cool. Yeah. All right. But yeah, well, we did it. We, we did, did it. 31 days. Plus all the interviews. I know. It's a lot. It's been a super fun, though. I was really glad you were up for doing it again this year. Yeah. Well, I'm up for next year, too. Yay. And, and be- any adventures jana any jana adventures we'll plan it yeah we'll plan it and awesome. so we need yes and for viewers Anne's not going away she'll be back on a somewhat regular basis we'll we'll figure yeah. that out you can't get rid of me yay okay <laughs> so <laughs> we'll cut over to our interview with jeanette budge and happy new year yeah happy new year Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. We are here today with Jeanette Budge, Shetland born and based designer and teacher who created the first fit cushion pattern for the Shetland Hogmanay box. Welcome, Jeanette, and happy Hogmanay to you. Yay. Thank you. Happy Hogmanay yeah. to you, too. Thanks. Um, so, we are starting with our designers. We're basically asking all of you when and why did you start designing? Well, I guess like a lot of Shetlanders, you, we start quite young, you know, in primary school, then we get um, knitting tuition, or we did when I was at school. So, um, you know, you'd knit a few things that the teacher had set you. And then after that, they say, do you want to knit a hat? Choose your motifs, choose your colors, and off you go. Um, but mm-hmm. I guess properly designing and printing patterns, um was probably 2016 when I got involved with Shetland Wool Week as a tutor. Okay. And me and my mother designed um, a little gift bag, which is really more about swatching, right. but um, something mm-hmm. having something useful. Sure. And then I think my first one after that was the Clickham and Cowell. Right. Which is that one there. And that's and named after a place in Shetland. Is that right? That's right. Yes, that's the, it's a ancient broch. So it's the Clickham in Broch, which is in um, Lerwick, just right um, surrounded by houses, really. You've visited it. Yeah. And, and uh, it's just really in the, not quite in the middle of town, but on the, the edge. And, but yeah, it's really accessible and very old. I couldn't tell you how old, but yeah. Mm-hmm. What was your inspiration for the, the first fit cushion? Well, I think it was more practical inspiration in the sense of, you know, that my sofa is dark brown. Um, I've got it here. And so it was like, what colors would go, you know, with that? And oh, that's so, amazing. You know, it's a really Very lovely, gorgeous. what I would call a Shetland black background. So it's not jet black black. It's wow. a Shetland black, like a brownie black. And then I wanted rich tones to go with that. Yeah. Um, and also if it was just a you know a pine wooden chair or something, then these colours would all go with that as well. And and I like to be able to see a motif, mm-hmm. you know, and for it to stand out. So that's another uh, reason for the for the colours. Um and the motifs are just, I guess, reasonably traditional Shetland motifs. I've changed little bits about them. Um so it's uh, to get it to to fit in to the stitch repeat and Mm -hmm. things like that because you've got the different motifs and they've got different stitch repeats and things to get fit so um yeah and and also because of the the number of grams of for for the yarn then that's really why we've got blue top and bottom okay (laughs) right i love it jeanette makes it too with the with the designs for the hogmanay box was the designers had the added challenge of having to use what came in the box oh i see i see yeah okay. so that so. was sort of some of them had a little bit of leeway because people could do like a half ball or a half hank but you know wow. they really had constraints on them by wow. by what was available to go in the box yeah so 
I um, love with the pattern ooh. though, with the, the first fit cushion, how like the daisies are like cutouts, you know, like you have it cut yeah. out and then you have. It I was just going to say, it. it's like the center is the daisy and then the top, it's like an inversion. Like yeah. The negative mm-hmm. image on the, yeah, that's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the other thing with naming it the first fit cushion is that like traditionally in, in Shetland, then if you were going first fitting, you would, well, in, in, in England, in the UK, you would bring a piece of coal, but in Shetland, you would bring a peat. So this is a very peaty color, you know. Oh. So, you know, a, a square cut piece of peat. Um, I guess that's like turf or something, but it's it's not really the turf where the grass grows. It's below that. Right. Um, you can easily find pictures online. And see, I don't know the term first mm-hmm. fit. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Well, it's what we do after midnight. Then we would go first fitting. And it's just visiting your neighbors. You bring along a dram. You bring along a gift. You bring a peat for good luck. Okay. Although I can't say we maybe just do it quite as religiously. But you do want someone who is dark haired to be crossing your threshold first. Oh. So, yeah. So my, my brother, he's blind haired. So he was always pushed to the back why is that why is that <laughs> i don't know i don't know I, I read i read something about that and it was the the person i read talking about it said that they thought it was because the vikings had light lighter hair and so you know the f- person coming in to your house the first time they bring a gift because it's sort of like symbolic of how you want your year to go so you don't want like an invader <laughs> you know coming into your home <laughs> not first anyway they have to be not first to be escorted first. by the <laughs> by the gentle folk yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and then if somebody has a bad year they don't want that person to be their first fit next year <laughs> we need someone yeah. new you are bad luck <laughs> yeah. so mm-hmm. okay so this is your happy new year parade yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have and, any and idea I mean, what this meant. <laughs> sometimes then you just get, you know, two or three people coming along. But at my parents' house, then my dad sings with a guitar. So we have had as many as between 30 and 40 people. Wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. And the, the, the partying goes on until maybe six or seven in the morning on New Year's Day. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good spree. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic yeah and we need yeah we should do that yeah well that's how that's how philippine christmas was was oh. people would go to midnight mass and then you would sort of go around and visit people immediately after and yeah and stay up until you know oh it was time to be getting up for the day <laughs> so what if you're like like as old as i am and you want to go to bed at nine o'clock <laughs> You can do that if you want, and and people do that. They don't. Not everyone goes for sweating, but those that want to socialize and um, and it's a really nice way to catch up with people you haven't seen yes. for a long time. Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's wonderful, especially if you have like a whole family of people, like you were saying, with you know thirty or four. That's amazing and so much fun. Yeah, yeah, lots of fun, and and it's very intergenerational. You know, you've got my dad who's 84 and you know not the little really little children but you've certainly got teenagers that are 16 17 and yeah and learning all the old songs and that's really nice Mm -hmm. i just want to go sit on someone's porch and watch this (laughs) (laughs) jeanette you should make a video of your father singing all the songs and stuff well, I have done, but I don't know if he'd allow me to share them. <laughs> oh, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So, Jeanette, you actually do, you teach knitting online as well. And, but your classes are a little unique compared to what people are probably used to. Can you um, tell us about your knitting classes? Well, it was really during the pandemic then, um, you know, wanting to offer them something different. And in mm-hmm. Shetland for knitting, we use a knitting belt, um, which is really just a tool 
that we use to pop our needle into. You can uh -huh. see that mm -hmm. this is the hole I'm using the most there. Um, and it stabilizes the needle. And over time, your brain gets to know exactly where the point of your needle is. And so it helps you to go faster. Mm -hmm. And it also reduces strain on your wrists and your arms. It takes some of the weight of your knitting, the knitting project you're working on. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's just it's been used certainly in Shetland or variations of this knitting belt for over 150 years. Wow. Um, you can find other sheaths across um, Europe, so wooden sheaths that there's just a stick with a hole drilled down the center, and that mm -hmm. was tucked into the belt um, that people wore, and that stabilized the needle. But this is more secure shall we say because the belt is buckled around your waist mm -hmm. and it's easier to keep the angle that you want because um, they're stuffed with horse hair okay. and so that helps to grip the needle and so it's okay. not too spongy it was, doesn't want to slip out too easy and things okay. like that yeah you can certainly tell the like you mentioned the the position that you use most often that works best for you yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you have a class you have a class about that yeah. Currently. And I've got two options. There's one where there's a live zoom first and I speak about the history of the belt. And there's another one that's um, links only to pre-recorded videos. Mm. And um, so there's, there's a couple of options there. And then I do a live Q&A every month or so, so that people can, can come along if they've got any questions or just share what they've been knitting because we're, all, we're spread out all over the world and you might not have someone near you that's using a knitting belt. And Oh yeah, nobody I know uses that. No. Yeah. I mean, I have one and I'm trying to learn, but I don't know anyone else that, you yeah. know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I mean, you, you talk about how it's been used for 150 years there, but there were other forms of it before that. And, and I was talking to um, another knitter up there during one of the classes at Will Week this time. And she made the point this is how everyone used to knit. Everyone used to knit with something to secure a needle on. And then everyone else is, are, are the people who moved away from doing that. You know, like we, we sort of think of it as like a local like thing that was just done in the UK or just done in wherever, but no, that's how knitting was done. Long needles, mm -hmm. a little support, either some way to do it. And yeah, so I, I think it's really cool. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I know you have a couple of other things there that you could show us. Would you mind showing us the yeah, things you brought with some you? of your designs? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And, and I want, um, and can you, and can you talk about this, your sweater too, that you're wearing? <laughs> it's lovely. Yeah. Um, well, I guess I'll talk about that one first. Um, this uh, is just a traditional motif. We have so many motifs, but this one in particular was dotted out by my husband's grandmother. She's, oh. she's no longer with us, mm -hmm. but I I was gifted um, a book that she, she'd she had, and this was dotted out by her in it. And the body of the, the cardigan is made in the machine, so we don't have to knit the plain part, right. um, which is really good. And it was a, a friend of their family, so it was nice to be able to put the two together. Um, mm -hmm. And the colours are from both Jimison and Smith and Jimison's of Shetland to get the blending of greens. Um, mm. And it's just lots of different greens. And then there's a bit of yellow that goes through the centre and that helps the pink to stand out more. Right. Um, I might write the pattern someday, but no plans at the moment. Um, I prefer to, to do hats. So this is one of the, an easy one. This is a double knit one. And the crown is a double thickness, um, but it's a good way to practice holding your yarns for fair isle because it's both the same color, oh, okay. but you're just alternating your fingers for each stitch, or you can do it two hands, whichever way you do it. Um, so that's the bitter sea beanie. And then the one that I'm be able to sell as a single pattern now, this was in the Shetland Wool Week Annual 2021. This is the Summer Light Hat. Uh -huh. So this was inspired by the lighthouse down at Sombra. So that's just um, 15 minutes from where I live. So that's like the light shining out. Oh, I love that. Um, 
um, and it's Jamerson's of Shetland Yarn. And the navy is called Admiral. It had to be Admiral. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, the colours are really of the, mm -hmm. you know, the mosses and the walls there, the decks and all that sort of thing as well. And then the other one I have is a single pattern that was in a book uh, called Confident Knitting. Mm -hmm. It's this one and it's the Variance hat and it's mm -hmm. lots of shades of pink. That was beautiful. And green. And um, that's the crown there. That's amazing. And Jane Arnold Colliford, who um, her and her husband made the book, they also have videos on YouTube. Okay. And it was catching floats is the technique that she's showing using my hat. Uh -huh. um, so there's some section that in here that I designed specifically. She asked me to leave sections where there would be long stretches that you would have to carry, a, you would have to catch a float. Right. Mm -hmm. And things like that. So that was part of the design. Yeah. But what traditionally in Shetland, I think then we try to design patterns so you don't have to catch a float very often. Mm -hmm. And that's um, what makes it easier for nothing, really. Right, right. That's beautiful. Excellent. Do you know, do you have any, sorry. Sorry, do you I want to. I just wanted to ask: real quick, Are those are those single patterns available on Ravelry? Then yes. Okay. Ravelry and Lovecrafts as well. Okay. okay. Great. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify where people could go and find those if they wanted. Sure. Yeah. 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 Go Do ahead, you have Anne. anything coming up in the new year that you'd like to share with us? Well, I'll be doing um, a talk that I did for Wool Week in person, which is the history of the Nothing Belt. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought that I, people might li like to see a wider audience, you know, so that's something that I can um, do as a, as a slideshow. Mm. Um, so that will be an hour long talk um, with a chance to ask questions and things. So we've got I haven't set the dates yet for January, but I'll be going to do that then. And there's, I'll be doing um, another knitting belt class as well. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So Jana will make sure that the links to your website are down below so people can check up on when yeah. the dates are going to be for those. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and sign up for your newsletter. Yeah. 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 We, that's the, and people in the newsletter get to know about everything 24 hours before people on social media. So it's... It's worth knowing. Yeah. Good. I just wanted to offer people um, a discount on my Ravelry um, store. Excellent. Um, if they enter uh, Puddle Together 20, oh. then they can get a 20% discount of any of my uh, single patterns. Lovely. Awesome. Jeanette, thank you so much for spending some time for us with us today and for your beautiful design for the hog mini box. And I hope Lovely. you have a wonderful time doing your first fitting this evening. Yay. Thank you. I'll need some stamina. Yes. <laughs> Happy hog mini. Thank you. You too. Bye.